Jasmine Kanick and Joel Pollack of Breitbart.com. Welcome to you both. Uh, Jasmine, let's start with you. I know you spoke at an event that Bernie spoke at last week. What'd you make of what he just said? I think he's exactly right. I think that people should be upset and they should be angry about what's going on in our country right now. But we need to figure out how we harness that anger into action. Um, these days, we have a lot of anger on social media, a lot of tweets, a lot of posts. Um, but that doesn't necessarily equate to votes on Election Day. And what the Democratic Party hasn't figured out how to do is how to make that leap. How do we get people from being upset online into being upset at the ballot box? Yes, about some 18% voter turnout in L.A. County this last week during Dismal. the election. Joel, your thoughts on what Bernie had to say? Well, the problem Bernie Sanders has is that things aren't actually going that badly in America. In fact, they're going very well. You have black unemployment, lowest ever, Hispanic unemployment, lowest ever, overall unemployment, lowest in almost 50 years and working class people doing very well. There's a lot of economic confidence. So it's harder to sell socialism when people are doing pretty well from the free market. And under Trump, the market has grown and that's starting to create jobs, to drive up wages, to raise incomes. He definitely has a connection with the grassroots and there are people in the Democratic Party who feel that their party didn't fight hard enough, they chose the wrong candidate, they were excluded. And that's where I think he still has resonance. But I think that's more a question of what goes on inside the Democratic Party than it is about the country. Yeah, and he didn't want to get into that, that sort of Bernie versus Hillary battle, which is still going on in the Democratic Party. How do you see that playing out? Is there anybody in the Democratic Party, whether it be Bernie, whether it be Joe Biden, whether it be Kamala Harris, who could actually bring those two sides together? I'm sure there is someone. I haven't found that person yet. I haven't seen that person emerge yet. Hopefully they will emerge soon. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. People are still upset from the election and haven't been able to move forward yet. And we need to, we have some very serious and important elections coming up. Who do you, did you think that person exists for Democrats? Not yet, but if we've learned anything from 2016, it's that you never know who's gonna come along. I mean, who would have said in 2013 that Donald Trump would be the nominee in 2016? We've got three years to go, a lot of things can happen. Well, a few years ago, you would have never imagined this picture of Donald Trump and Kim Kardashian in the Oval mm -hmm. Office together. We had mm -hmm. a commutation because of that. Uh, of Alice Johnson. What did you make of that? Oh, wow, that's a loaded question. I'm so happy that Ms. Johnson is out of prison. I'll start with saying that. Um, but I will also not give Kim Kardashian all the credit for it because there are a lot of people over a good number of years that worked really hard on Alice Johnson's case. Those were the same people who made it for Kim Kardashian to even find out about it on social media. What I will say is that we have a president who is moved by beautiful women. Mm. And so there are people who consider Kim Kardashian beautiful. What I will also say is that Kim Kardashian is not black, um, but I'm, I'm happy to see her giving back to a community she's taken so much from. <laughs> Joel, real quick reaction to that? I think it's fantastic, and I think the really interesting thing she said was that it's important to get things done. And she's not a Republican. People have given her a lot of grief for, for meeting with Trump, but she said, look, he was willing to listen. He was willing to do what was right. And I think that's a model for the rest of the country. We have to work with people we disagree with. And she reached out to Donald Trump, and he reached back. And, and that's how he got that, things done. Hopefully that's part of the model of this show as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, so coming up, we've got a big election this week. We're going to talk about that more with our panel when we come back. This is where you dance, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> not, my, not, not my music. This point. Although I get that. And it looks like voters will have a real choice this November between a governor who's going to stand up to Donald Trump and a foot soldier in his war on California. Mr. Newsom made it clear that he wanted to, to run against me instead of another Democrat. Well, as I told him in San Jose at the debate, be careful, Mr. Newsom. Be careful for what you wish for. Yeah. Well, back to the issue is this week, Democrat Gavin Newsom and Republican John Cox officially moved on in the race for California governor. Let's talk about that with our panel. Joel Pollack from Breitbart, Jazz Mechanic, political commentator. So the election sort of happened is what we expected. What do you make of what comes next? Well, let's not forget the 118,000 voters that were disenfranchised on voter day because they were somehow mysteriously removed from the voter scrolls. Well, they were able to vote with provisional ballots. Right, but a lot of people don't carry, they don't think that their vote counts when they yeah. do it that way. 
I think that we are going to have a real race for governor. We have um, a candidate who's going to probably be backed again by our president and someone who is opposed to our president. What I think is, is an opportunity for Republicans to stop acting like blacks never gain the right to vote and maybe see what they can do in terms of speaking to African-American voters in this state who are feeling a little less in love with the Democratic Party these days. Yeah, Joel, this morning on Good Day LA, I spoke with the White House Deputy Press Secretary and asked, is President Trump going to come out here and campaign for John Cox? He said there's no plans for that now. Do you think that would be a good thing? Yeah, I think so. I think that Republicans are excited, first of all, to have a candidate in the general election. Remember when we first spoke several weeks ago, that wasn't clear. It looked like it could have been an all-Democrat final, but now Republicans have someone at the top of the ticket. That's going to help congressional races down ticket, which Republicans really want to hold on to in terms of keeping Nancy Pelosi out of the Speaker's seat in the House of Representatives. I think Trump would help their cause by coming here and campaigning. Gavin Newsom, of course, running as the anti-Trump candidate, would also like it. I think the big question Democrats have to face, and they also took something out of Tuesday because they avoided the shutout in some of those congressional districts, but the big question is, is Gavin Newsom in it for himself or is he in it for the party? Because as your segment just showed, he promoted John Cox ahead of other Democratic candidates. He didn't want Antonio Villaraigosa in the final, even though that might have been better for Democrats overall. So is he out for himself, or is he carrying a message? Is he speaking to issues that other Democrats care about? He says, his team told me this week, that it's good that it's now going to be Democrat versus Republican, because that essentially clarifies the choice uh, for voters. What do you think? Again, I mean, it, it, it gives people an opportunity, particularly black voters, to sort of figure out where they fall on the issue. There's this sort of blind loyalty in California as it relates to the Democratic Party and black voters. But there are issues that the Democratic Party refuses to speak on that directly relate to African Americans. And so it'll be really interesting to see where Newsom falls on those issues. He has done little messaging to black voters in this state. He's taken our vote for granted, basically. And it'll be interesting to see if Cox seizes upon that opportunity yeah. and tries to talk to blacks. It will be interesting. More with our panel when we come back. Our last question, what's the next big issue in the week ahead? Joel. Education reform, with Marshall Tuck qualifying for the general election and doing very well in the primary. Reforming L.A. County jails and criminal justice reform. All right, that's all for us on TV. Join us on my Alex Michelson Facebook and YouTube pages for more with our panel right now. We'll see you online. Have a great weekend. I'm not trying to go I can be at all, Gotta get up out of here.